Uranium, the mineral of today, the mineral of the atomic era, the mineral that holds imprisoned within itself a priceless source of power. Highly sensitive scintillometers attached to helicopters pick up radioactive emanations that betray the presence of uranium in the rocks below. Air prospecting, followed up by more detailed search on the ground, has given encouraging indications of the size of the uranium-bearing deposits along the Alps though the mineral is not yet being extracted to the extent that it can be used on an industrial scale. Nevertheless, complex plans for the production of uranium metal from ore imported from France is already in operation. Special precautions are needed in handling. After going through many transformations, an ingot is obtained of extreme purity in a high vacuum salad. At the moment of casting, the uranium is at a temperature of anything from 1200 to 1300 degrees centigrade. Meanwhile, all over the world, consumption of electricity is mounting at a tremendous rate. This is where uranium comes in. Uranium, the source of energy for the future. The deposits of traditional fuel in the world, coal, oil, underground gas, will not last forever. In many countries, too, the practical limit has been reached with their hydroelectric potential. The reserves of all these sources of energy are inexorably becoming depleted, yet with uranium to the rescue, the balance can be restored without difficulty. Compared with conventional fuels, uranium has this advantage, that in hardly any space at all, it concentrates a practically inexhaustible amount of power. The man who blazed the trail to this new source of energy was Enrico Fermi in his tiny laboratory in the Via Panisperna and Rome. The disintegration of an atomic nucleus as a result of a controlled chain reaction unleashes an enormous amount of energy. Here we are at an atomic generating station in Britain. This huge power station can provide electricity for several counties, and yet the fuel used there is the infinitesimally small world of the uranium atom. The atom is a solar system in miniature. Around the central nucleus, electrons, which are particles carrying a negative charge, revolve like so many satellites. The chemical properties of the atom of any element are determined by the number of its electrons. A lithium atom like this one has three electrons. Uranium has 92. The nucleus is made up of two different types of particles. Neutrons in green here, which carry no electrical charge, and protons, here shown in red, having a positive charge. The number of protons is always exactly matched by the number of electrons orbiting around the nucleus, so that the atom is electrically stable or neutral. Two atoms which are chemically identical, in other words, with the same number of electrons and therefore of protons, but with a different number of neutrons, are called isotopes. Practically all the elements in nature have several isotopes. Some isotopes are known as radioisotopes or radioactive isotopes because they spontaneously give off electromagnetic particles or rays. These emissions are of three types. Alpha rays, particles consisting of two neutrons and two protons. Beta rays, with the same mass as the electrons, but with a positive or negative charge. And gamma rays, which are electromagnetic, like those which make up X-rays. The structure of a nucleus can be altered by bombarding it with particles endowed with very great energy. Protons, for example. Bombarding changes the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and in this way, artificial isotopes can be made. Generally, these artificial isotopes are radioactive. When a neutron passes near a nucleus, it may get absorbed by it and set off inside that nucleus a special type of reaction known as fission. The nucleus splits in two, giving off a number of neutrons at the same time, and these, in their turn, may cause fission to take place in other nuclei, thus setting off a chain reaction. In a chain reaction, an enormous quantity of energy is released, representing the total of all the tiny amounts liberated in the individual fission.
In the basic research underlying all nuclear physics, a highly important role is that of the accelerators, rightly called atom smashers. Italy today has one of the most powerful examples of such apparatus, the 11 megavolt electrosynchrotron at Frascati. Electrons accelerated in the donors of the magnet are used to bombard matter and produce gamma rays in the process. While in the national laboratories at Frascati that we have just seen, the now no longer mysterious worlds of matter and antimatter are being explored, in other centers, such as this one at Ispra, now the nuclear research center for the European community, experimental work is carried on in the application of nuclear power to the various sectors of industry. Let's go inside the Ispra 1, a heavy water thermal reactor rated at 5,000 kilowatts. Research workers and their attitude to the reactor behave as if this were a living thing with a personality of its own. No matter if in their slang among themselves, they refer to it as the machine. When the reactor is working, it's said to be critical. Nuclear applications ramify out into a vast field of activities, from medicine to archaeology, from agriculture to metallurgy. When exposed to radiation from a radioisotope, steel laminations show up their characteristics and any defects there may be in the casting or welding. These shots were taken during the building of the Leonardo da Vinci, the flagship of the Italian merchant fleet. A cobalt bomb is being brought near to a welding, an infallible test of the quality of the metallurgist's work. One of the lesser known uses of radioisotopes is that of dating biological and archaeological specimens. Samples of carbon are here seen being removed from marine rocks. Every living plant organism absorbs a radioisotope from the atmosphere, carbon-14, formed under the action of cosmic rays. Any plant, once it's cut or dies, loses its radioactivity according to a precisely determined law. The radiocarbon in a newly felled tree registers 12.5 clicks per minute of the Geiger counter. After 5,600 years, half the content will have disappeared and will produce only 6.25 clicks and so on progressively, so that if, say, three clicks are registered, this means that the tree was alive 11,000 years ago. The gamma field at the Kasatcha Nuclear Studies Center is an amazing example of an application of radioactivity in the biological sphere. A number of plants, various stages of growth, are exposed to radiation emanating from a radio cobalt source. Radiation produces genetic modifications in the plant, and in this way, new types of plants may be produced. The alarm tells the scientists and garden laborers to leave the gamma field as the radio cobalt source is about to be raised out of its underground container, and its invisible rays are bringing about changes in the things before our eyes. Not far away from the gamma field is the Three Gamma II reactor, here renamed RC1, a research and training reactor. The young scientists and technicians speak a language here that's different from the one we are used to, and their world seems far removed from ours. Yet their work is directed to solving our problem, how to meet the ever-mounting demand for power. The first all-Italian reactor is at an advanced stage of planning. It will not be long now before in our country too, the odd handful of uranium will be enough to light our houses and supply the power without which there can be no industrial progress. <laughs> 